And we are recording. Okay, good. Hello, everybody. Um, so there's uh, not a lot of time left for project three, um, which uh, is kind of a mistake on my part. Apologies for that. Um, but it's it's not going to be too bad um, as long as you have uh, some of the stats or yeah the stats that are that are asked for on the outline. Um, then you'll get full points for, for project three. So let's first look at the outline for, for a theme for the project and uh, go from there. So the outline is here. Um, the, the title page, just as your regular stuff, it's kind of um, uh, summarizing theme three, what we did in theme three, what we learned. Um, for the survey, because of time, we're actually going to use data from last semester for the survey, so uh, you don't have to worry about filling out the survey, but uh, these are some of, the, some of the questions that were asked in the survey and will be asked in, in future uh, uh, semesters for this course. But uh, again, for, for the sake of time, we're gonna be using uh, last semester's uh, uh, survey. So uh, for the grading criteria, number one, you can skip because that is completing the survey. Again, we're not doing the survey this semester. We're just going to use last semester's uh, data for that. So um, question two, you're going to pick two, or problem two, question two. Mm. Uh, you're going to pick two numerical grade elements you are interested in. So this could be like, take for example, uh, comparing test one grades with the homework average of the student. Um, and you're going to use statistics to analyze the data. So we're basically going to be using section uh, chapter six material, um, mostly 6A and 6B. 6C, if you remember, was was focused on normal distribution. So unless uh, unless the data that you have is going to give you a normal distribution, then 6C won't apply. And and we'll we'll uh, look at how to do that. So we're going to look at uh, various things like mean, median, and mode. What is the shape of the distribution? Is it uniform? Is it unimodal? Is it bimodal? Remember that that refers to how many peaks the, the data has. Um, is it symmetric or is it skew? Uh, if it's normal, then it's going to be symmetric. Otherwise, it's skewed. So if it's skewed, is it going to be left skewed or right skewed? And then um, putting it all together in, in, a, in a box plot and looking at, looking at the data. Um, so I'm going to, going to uh, look at look at that. Uh, B use a histogram to display the data. Uh, C analyze the data and the histogram. So that's again looking at the box plot, looking at the mean, median, the mode. Uh, what is the the standard deviation and things like that. Um, now uh, this in and of itself would seem like a very daunting task and and is relatively uh, complex. But uh, luckily for us, uh, StatCrunch can actually do a lot of that for us. And in fact, most of that for us. And so we're going to actually be using Stat, StatCrunch, um, which is going to be the next part of this video. I'll show you how to import the data that is uploaded from last semester. And this, this uh, data will be on web campus. So first you'll download the data. I'll show you how to upload it on StatCrunch. You'll choose two of the numerical va uh, variables. So again, homework average, mini project average, test one, test two, or project one, project two grades uh, scores. And then, and then going through this. So uh, that's number two. Uh, number three, decide on a burning question about the data. For example, uh, one question might be whether girls outperform boys in a particular item. So take for example, for test one, do boys or girls perform better or do they perform in a, a a, 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 an equivalent manner. Um, decide the best way to display that data in one chart. And again, uh, we'll show, I'll show you how to use StatCrunch to do that. Um, and here, we're, we're kind of looking at um, correlation. Uh, we have to be careful. Uh, causation is, is a little bit difficult to prove and we're not really going to get into depth there. We're just looking, is there a correlation between these uh, these different variables. So in this, in this example that's given to you in, in the outline um, would be gender. Does gender correlate to performance on test one? Or does gender 
correlate to performance on the homework, things like that. Um, and then you want to analyze the data and answer your burning question. Uh, so using the data that is provided, and again, this is you know just one data set, so that doesn't necessarily mean it's representative of all of reality. It's just a representative of the students that took the survey from last semester. Um, but does there seem to be a, a correlation there uh, or not? Uh, does it, was it what you expected or not? Um, so that's that's what we're looking at here for project for theme three. Okay, so um, the first thing that you should do is download the data and uh, be, be the the, pro, the the file name is survey data for students fall 19, well it says F19, which is for fall 2019. Um, I believe it's a CSV file, yes, yeah, CSV file. Um, you should be able to open that in, uh, in Excel, if you don't have Excel, then um, I believe OpenOffice does open it as well. Uh, so you're going to want to first open up the data, get familiar with what the questions were. So uh, where, what is, uh, which column, so this is in separate into columns, which column represents uh, class standing. So let's take, for example, you know, class standing. Are, are you a, a freshman, a sophomore, junior, senior? Uh, which column is that? Which column is how many credit hours you were enrolled in? Which which column is your age group? Which column is the gender? Uh, which column is the homework average, many project average, the test one score, test two score? Um, basically, to just familiarize with yourself with the data, to choose uh, the two numerical values that you're going to look at, and then possibly for this for this uh, third one. Uh, figure out if there is a, a category that you want to check to see um, if there is a correlation between that category and the, the given uh, data set that you're looking at. So take, for example, if I, you pick test one as one of your numerical elements from part two, uh, looking at test one. For question three, you can decide, all right, I want to look at uh, does the the number of credit hours that the student was enrolled in have an effect on test one? Like, is there a correlation there? Do students that are uh, enrolled in less credit hours do better? Or students that are enrolled in, in more credit hours do better? What do you expect that to, uh, what do you expect the answer to that to be? And then uh, we'll look at, at how, to, how to use StackCrunch to, to analyze that. So, um, so Again, the, the taking the survey part, again, that is, for the sake of time, we're just going to use last semester's uh, data for that. So you want to open up the data, familiarize yourself with the columns, with what numerical values there are. There, well, there are not many. There's the homework average, mini project average, test one, test two, project one, project two. Those are basically the, your numerical, um, numerical data. If, if I remember correctly, I don't think there's... I don't think there's any any other ones in there, and then there there are other um, variables as well to look at for part three, like uh, class standing. Are you a, a freshman, junior, senior, sophomore? Uh, how many credit hours are you enrolled in? What is your age group? What is your gender? Things like that. Uh, those are the other the non numerical ones. Those are going to be used for part three. Okay, so with that out of the way, um, let's take a look at how to uh, use StackCrunch to help you out with this. And so again, it, it, it seems like a little bit of a daunting task, but once you use StackCrunch, I promise it's not gonna be as bad as it seems. So first, uh, first rule of mathematics, don't panic. It, it seems a lot worse than it is. StackCrunch is gonna help out a lot. So uh, to do StackCrunch, let me uh, switch my window here. We're going to be using Pearson, of course since that's where our stack crunch is available for. I'm just gonna click on this first course. Um, and hopefully this is going to load. It's not seeming to wanna load, let's see. Uh, hmm. Apologize, my computer's being a little bit slow. There we go, okay. Uh, so if you remember um, from early in the semester and maybe you don't, that's fine. Uh, on the left hand side here are the are the different tabs, different pages that you can open in Pearson. 
Uh, so it has your, your the course home, course tools, the assignments, the grade book, and things like that. Uh, what we want is Stack Crunch. So that's right here, close to the bottom. So you're gonna click on Stack Crunch. Uh, from here, you're gonna click on Start uh, Stack Crunch website. You're gonna pull up a new tab. Uh, you're going to click on Open Stack Crunch. You're gonna pull up a new tab. Uh, so let me let me close that one. Okay, so this is Stack Crunch just as it is. Obviously, you don't want to enter this data by hand because that's just not that's not going to be very fun, not not very useful. So what you're going to go do is you're going to go to data here and you're going to do load from file on my computer. So again, uh, this this data is going to be uploaded to Web Campus. You'll download it, so it'll be on your computer. You want to figure out where it is. Usually it's in your download, fold, download folder. If you want to save it somewhere else, that's fine. Just you know, make sure you know where it is. So you're going to go to data, load from file on my computer. Click that. And then you can browse or you can drag the file here. So if you already have your download folder open or whichever folder you saved it into, I have mine open here. You can just drag it into the window. And then it will, it should should look something like this. Gonna uh, scroll to the bottom, click upload, and then that's going to take a little bit of time and look like this. Okay, sorry. Let me uh, let me clear this out since I've I I tested this before the video. Um, so this is what it should look like uh, once you, once you upload the data. It'll say survey for students, uh, survey data for students, fall. 2019, that's the, that's the file that you're gonna download from my campus, unless you change the name, but if you don't change the name, that's what it's gonna look like. And so after you upload it, you're just gonna click on that. It's gonna open a new window. <laughs> it's kind of annoying in that way. Open that new window. So let me, um, oh, hold on one second. Make sure that I'm on this right one. Um, so let me, let's close some of these other windows. So this doesn't get too bad. Okay, uh, so this is the data uh, from the Excel sheet as it looks like in StackCrunch. So you have a whole bunch of stuff here. Now, um, when you're looking through the data, I would write down uh, which numerical data you're going to look at. So take, for example, I wanna look at the homework. That is question 10 underscore one. So instead of, instead of uh, keeping that as it is here, I'm going to, Going to uh, double click, not double click. Click on the uh, the top here, and I'm going to rename that as homework average. So I want to know uh, that's that's one of the new that's the uh, one of the numerical data uh, categories that I'm interested in is homework average. Uh, the next one was test three, which is ten underscore three, and so I'm going to rename that as test one. Okay, and then uh, for the part three, uh, I'm going to look at class standing. So that's uh, question one, Q1. So I'm going to rename that as class standing. Class standing. And then uh, in, the, in the handout, it actually also mentions gender. So let's do that one. That one is Q6. Uh, so let's change that to gender. Okay, so this is our data. Uh, now you don't necessarily have to rename those. I just find it easier if you do. Uh, so let's let's start with uh, analyzing the data using statistics. So on part two, we're just going to focus on the homework average and the test one average. And this doesn't have to be the ones that you look at. You can look at any one, any any two of the numerical data that you want. I'm just uh, going off of what was listed on project on the on the uh, the uh, project three uh, explanation. So we're going to go to uh, let's let's uh, start with histogram. So graph, and then histogram. You're going to select the columns. Now, if you've renamed these, then you can just hit, uh, click on homework average, and you can do these all at the same time, or you can do one at a time. So if you want to do both, then you hit uh, control and click on test one. You'll notice that they both up there. Uh, let me make sure that this is sharing that. Okay. Okay. Uh, and so you could do them both at the same time. Uh, in in the uh, handout, let's see here. 
in the handout. Uh, it also talks about bins. Notice that is here. If you wanna do bins, um, so remember binning data, that is if we're looking at uh, sorting the data between certain numerical values. So the start at, you can just ignore. Uh, so let's say we want the data to be sorted uh, by 10. So zero to 10, uh, sorry, zero to nine, uh, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, then the width of the bin is going to be 10. So let's change that there. Width of our bin is 10. I'm gonna hit compute, and that's gonna bring up our histogram here. So you'll notice here is our frequency, here is our homework average, and if we click on the second page, here is the test average. And I believe uh, options, yeah, you can, you can save this. Um, uh, I don't think saving is what you want. Um, you can print this, uh, you can print it as a PDF. If you want, you can take a screenshot, whatever uh, is best. That's, that's one of the things that we're looking for is the histogram. Uh, let's also, let's go to edit here. So if you, if you uh, mess up on this or you wanna tweak the data, tweak the bins, the bin size and stuff like that, you just go to options, edit. And here, let's, uh, let's put in, where was it here? Uh, value above bar, uh, that I like. That shows you how many data points are in each given category. And if you want, you can, you can play around with the width. Let's change the width to 15 just to see what that does. Um, I don't think any of this other, thing, other things you need. You can, you can label, uh, change the labeling and stuff um, so you can get fancy on that. Uh, but I'm not gonna be too picky with this. Uh, let's then hit compute. So now our bin size is 15, and you'll see that the number of data points is here on top of it. And uh, if you have your mouse over top, and hopefully this is showing up in the recording, it will uh, tell you what frequency it is and what the, uh, what the uh, bin um, range is. So in this case, 90 to 105, the frequency is 131. And in fact, with StatCrunch, is, is, well, something that's nice is you click on that and it will highlight all of the data points that are in that bin. Uh, but that's, that's getting a little bit beyond what we're doing in this course. You don't need to worry about that. Um, and, then, and again, if you wanna change any of this, you can go to options, edit, you can play around with this. Um, you can even change the width of the bin data to five. And so that's gonna give you a more, um, more discreet uh, histogram than before. Uh, so if we look at the data then, we can look at this and we can ask, all right, what is the shape of this distribution? Is, is this, does this, um, is, is it uniform? Is everything spread out in the same way? Is it uh, unimodal? Does it have one peak? Is it bimodal? Does it have two peaks? Is it, does it have more than that? So it's neither of those three, those were the three that we talked about in class. Uh, is it symmetric or skew? Notice for the homework, this is definitely skew. This is uh, left skewed because um, most of the outliers are here on the left side of the graph. And in fact, that is also the case for test one as well. So these are both skew, not uh, symmetric. So they're, as a, as a note, they are not normal distributions. Normal distributions are symmetric. Uh, and these are skew, so it's not symmetric. Um, then, to find the other things, mean, median, and mode, things like that. Uh, we, let's, let's, uh, let me close this one. When you close this in StackCrunch, you're not really uh, closing it, it's just like minimizing a window. Uh, it's found under results. So you can click on uh, StackCrunch results, and then here is the histogram for homework average and test one. So if I click on that, it'll bring that back up. So it's not, it's not uh, you're not deleting it, uh, it's basically just like minimizing the window. Okay, uh, so next let's go to stat and we wanna go to summary stats and columns because our data is sorted into columns. And uh, we want homework average and let's go ahead and scroll down here and test one. And then under statistics, uh, N is the number of data points. We'll keep that mean we want uh, variance. Let's get rid of variance, we don't need that. Standard deviation we want. Uh, standard error we don't want, uh, has the median, the range, minimum, maximum, and then quartile, uh, the 
first and third quartile. And then at the very bottom, if you scroll down, it also has mode. So let's uh, remember to hold control when you're adding this, click on mode and then compute. And so then this brings up the information here. Here's homework uh, average. Tells us what the mean is, what the standard deviation is, uh, what is the median, what is the range. Here's our minimum and maximum, our quartiles, and our mode. And if it has multiple modes, that's fine. If it doesn't, if you, if you don't uh, know what those are, because it doesn't give you what those are in StackCrunch, just to mention they're multiple modes. So, um, so that's fine. Okay, so uh, you can analyze the data in that way. Um, the next thing that we want to do is look at a box plot. And so let's go ahead and, and close this. So you're going to go to graph. Uh, you're going to go to box plot, which is here. Click on that. We want homework one, uh, not homework one, homework average and test one. So click on those. Remember, hold, hold control to select the two um, that you're looking at. And then uh, let's see. Uh, you want to draw boxes horizontally is what we were doing in, in class. So that is right here uh, under the other options. And then you can hit compute. And there it brings up the tests and homework average on our box plot. Uh, so then you can analyze the, the data there. Um, and, you know, Holding your mouse over top will show you the the uh, the data. So for for test one, uh, it's telling us that they their number of values were 307. So there were 307 students that participated in this survey last semester. There's one outlier, which is represented by this dot here on the left hand side. Um, the lower limit is 25. Uh, so you'll see that's kind of, that's the uh, that's the bottom of our box plot here. The uh, quartile one is 64, med median is 77, quartile three is 91, and the upper limit is 100. So the lower limit and the upper limit, those were what we called the lowest value and the highest value in, in the textbook. Uh, but it gives you that information here. Uh, and we can look at the homework average, and it tells us this one that there are uh, 26 outliers, which are represented by these dots as well, here on the left-hand side of the graph. Um, and again, the, the outliers for this data is usually going to be on the left-hand side since we're looking at grades. You were looking at other data that was not dealing with, with um, academic stuff and it would might be skewed in the other way, but uh, just, just by the nature of the, the data, this is going to be left skewed. Uh, so there's the box plot. So that's that's basically question two. Now, you're going to want to uh, save these graphs in some way, take a screenshot and put them into a Word document or uh, print them as a PDF and then attach the, the write up to, to the end of that. But analyze what is the mean, the median, the mode, what is the shape of the distribution? Is it symmetric or skew? What is the box plot? Discuss what that, what that is more in depth, um, as, as, as in depth as you are able to. And as is reasonable, you know, I don't want I don't want a 50 page report, just, you know, just enough to to make sure that uh, that I know that you understand the, the statistics and stuff like that, even even though we're using StackCrunch to, uh, to evaluate that there's not no problem using using the tools available. So really, we'll use StackCrunch. So that's part two. Uh, part three to start on a burning question. So uh, one of the questions could that that is suggested or as given as an example is, for example, uh, do girls outperform boys? If boys outperform girls. It would it be about the same. What do you think the data should show? Then you're going to come to your data and you're going to, let's, let's use uh, test one. So we're going to go to graph and we're going to go to histogram again and we're going to choose test one. And now, because we are asking the question about uh, this other variable, does this other variable have a correlation with it? Take, for example, gender is the one that is suggested. Then under group by, we're going to choose gender. And then we're going to hit compute. And notice that's going to give us three pages. They're here, there are three uh, box, uh, three histograms. 
So here, gender is female. It gives us the histogram. And let's, uh, let's, let's go into this as well. Uh, let's edit this. We want it, you want this to be consistent. So you want the, the histogram to have the same bin width that you had before, so that's five. And just for the sake of consistency, let's also put the value above the bar. So again, that's the, uh, the number of, of students in that particular category here. So this gives us our, our histogram for female. Uh, on test one, it looks like this is bimodal. If we click uh, next. Gender male, this looks like this could be bimodal as well. It's kind of hard to tell with the histogram. And then uh, for the third one, this is uh, gender is not listed. And there are only three data points here, so it's not as uh, spread out as uh, the first two categories. So uh, for the uh, gender being other, not listed, or whatever you wanted to uh, describe that as, uh, there's just simply not enough data to really say, um, say much about that. Uh, so you can, you can uh, analyze the data there. What did you suspect would be the case? What is, what is the case? Analyze the data. Um, oh, another thing that is very nice with Bachplot. Let's go to edit here. Um, notice uh, here kind of in the middle are markers. You can click on the mean and the median. And that will show you uh, where the mean and the median are on the box plot, which is, is uh, very nice. So um, for, I guess, test one, the mean and the median are pretty close together, but that's not always the case. Um, so there's our box plot. Uh, you can do the same thing with the uh, stat summary. So you go to stat, summary stats. We're going to do columns. We're looking at test one. And we're going to group by, so again, we go to the group by, and we want gender in this particular case. And again, we're going to get rid of uh, variance and standard error. We don't want those. And I'm holding control while I click these to, so to uh, get rid of just the one instead of selecting multiple. And then here at the very bottom, I want to include mode. I'm going to hit compute. And so notice that gives, there, those are my three categories. Uh, so for female, there is a mode of 70. For male, there is multiple modes. For the not listed, there is no mode. And here the N, that again tells you how many data points you have in each one. So there were 189 females, the mean was 74.9, standard deviation was 17, and this gives you the quartile information. Same thing with male, 115 uh, was the amount of, of data there, mean was 78, standard deviation 15.7. Uh, so there's the second thing. And then the last thing are the box plots. So let's go to graph and box plot. And we're, going, and we're choosing test one and group by gender. So let's find uh, where is that? That's their gender. And again, the reason why I renamed those, if you notice, if I scroll down, most of these are labeled in the same way that they were on the, on the survey. So here's Q9, Q20. I don't know what question 20 was. So I don't want to, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a good idea to rename what you want. And let's, let's uh, draw the boxes horizontally as well. That's what we did in class. And then, well, let's actually, I'm going to unselect that and show you what it looks like. And we'll compute. So this is what it looks like if you do not do the, uh, so this is, this is drawing the, the uh, box plots vertically. And there's no problem with that, but our book uh, used the horizontal one. So if it looks, weird, then it's probably because it was done the, in the other way. So then you just go to edit, uh, draw boxes horizontally, and then compute, and here it is. And so here, notice at the very bottom, we have our test one. These are our scores. So this, these are the, uh, the quartiles. We have our female box plot, our male box plot, and our other box plot for our gender. And again, the, because we only have three here that were in other, that's, that's not going to be but it's, it's hard to do data on a very small sample size. And by very small, I mean less, less than, well, even less than 50 is hard. So just a data sample of three is, is very hard to do, to do uh, statistics with. Um, but that's, that's why, why the uh, other in this case is looking kind of, kind of on. Um, but the male and the female here, you can look at that, you can discuss, all right. Looking at this, I can see that the the uh, the median for male was a little bit higher than it was for female. Uh, was that what I conjectured? Is that not? 
uh, they look like they're pretty close. So if I hold my mouse over, uh, the median here is 80. The median here was uh, 76. That is pretty close within four, uh, four points. And, and I believe also, let, let's go to edit one more time. You can also put in the mean and the median as well for these. Let's see what, what that looks like. Uh, so you can put in the mean and the median. And I like to uh, maximize these to kind of give, give a, a bigger idea of, of what's going on here. And so, um, so that's, let me close that. Uh, and let's go back to our theme three here. So that's basically theme three. So again, for part two, part one, you, you don't need to worry about since we're using data from last semester. Um, part two, pick two numerical. So here you're comparing two numerical uh, uh, variables. Uh, so what are you interested in? Are you interested in test one versus test two? Are you interested in the homework versus test one, the homework versus test two, the mini project average versus project one, the test one versus project one, test one versus project two, just whatever two numerical grade elements you are interested in comparing. And then use the statistics as, as I showed you, uh, incorporating StackCrunch for, for those. Uh, and then three, uh, decide on a burning question. So here you can bring in um, the non-numerical uh, ca variables, categories. Uh, like take for example, is class sta class standing? You know that's what year you are in in school, or what are what are the number of credit hours you enrolled in, or what is your age group, um, and and so on. So you can you can come up with a with a question there. And one of your numerical uh, data points. Um, so in this case, we stuck with what the uh, I, I believe that was set here between two numerical sets. Oh, okay. So you're going to do that with the both numerical sets. We only did it for test one, but you would just repeat that for the homework as well. Um, so for part three, you're going to look at uh, separating that by category. Okay. Um, so again, uh, when when you are submitting this, um, you can do this in your groups. Uh, that's fine. You can coordinate however you did for for project two. You can do this on your own if you want. That's fine too. Um, when when you are writing this up, uh, please write it up in a well. I would prefer in a in a word document, uh, but it's fine if you if you uh, as long as it's in a single document. That's that's mostly what I'm what I'm hoping for. Um, and then from the stack crunch, you can either uh, uh, take a screenshot or copy, save those, um, those graphs in some way and import those into your, your document and discuss those. Uh, but that's, that's basically uh, this, this project for, for theme three. So uh, it seems a little bit overwhelming, but it's really not all that bad. Um, the, the hard part I would say is using StackCrunch, but once you get the StackCrunch thing figured out and once you have uh, all of the data which we will, will be provided, then uh, just analyzing the data just to make sure that you guys understand the, the uh, statistics part of that. Um, so, so that's what we're doing for, for the uh, project. Uh, let's see. Our test is this week. Uh, I would prefer if you turned it in on Sunday, but I'm. Uh, let's let's say as long as you get it in by Tuesday, April fifth. So let me write that down. Tuesday, April fifth, at eleven fifty nine p.m. Uh, I give you guys a couple more days to work on that, uh, in case you're studying for the exam. So uh, get that in to me by then. Um, and again, if you want to work in groups, that's fine. If you want to work on your own, that's fine. Uh, but hopefully this gives you an idea of what we're doing for project three. Um, perhaps this was a little more in depth than you wanted me to go, but that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. So that's what we're doing for theme three. Um, again, just, just follow, uh, follow the handout part, uh, parts two and three are what we're looking at. Part one would be filling out the survey, but we're just not, not going to worry about that this semester. So um, hopefully that explains it. If you have any questions, 
let me know, send me an email. Um, and uh, otherwise, let's, uh, let's go ahead and we can, you can get that in uh, by Tuesday. All right, thank you very much. Have a good day.